Hello, hello, everybody. It is 12.04 p.m. Central Time on the 7th of May, 2020, Thursday here in the United States. Hope you are doing well. Uh, let me know how we sound. If we sound okay, we're live on Twitch right now. Press 1 if we sound okay before we get going. And again, let me just tell you guys, welcome in. It's been a long few months, hasn't it, guys? I'll tell you what, it has just been crazy over the past few months. But, seems like things might be getting back to normal, and, well, you know, that's a good point for us to get into the earthquake striking here. So, uh, looking here across the West Pacific, you're going to see a few earthquakes that have popped off here. And we have a big, deep earthquake. 6.1 magnitude here, and the depth down at 480 kilometers deep. We consider this a deep earthquake, and when we see deep earthquakes like this, we then expect shallower, larger earthquakes to take place. And the shallower, larger earthquake that's going to take place off this should happen in the next 7 to 10 days. And the location should be somewhere close to where our big, deep earthquake is. Now, we can sort out our fulcrum points. We have a previous 6.8 earthquake here and a 6.1 deep earthquake here and a series of deep 4s going over to our letter D over at Tonga. So that's a lot of deep earthquake activity, and that's just in the last day and a half. So deep 6.1, we look for up to a 7.1, one magnitude larger, to come popping up off this in the next 7 to 10 days at a nearby fulcrum point. So I want you to think of this big deep earthquake, this big deep 6, like a very strong person lifting on the underside of an object, and then these are like less strong people lifting in unison together. So together, they have a combined lifting force on the underside of the plate, or more like a jackhammering action that comes up on the underside of the plate. So yesterday's 6.8, and today's 6.1, that's an increase. Now, some people will say, well, there's only normally supposed to be six or three 6.0s per week on average, according to the USGS. But we know for certain that there are some weeks where there aren't any 6.0s at all or greater. So when we start seeing multiples in a week, we go back to the start of the week, and Greece got its largest earthquake in months. It was 6 point something too, 6.6. .6. So when we get back to last week, when I did an update last week, I told everybody this coming week, which is this week we're in now, we're going to be going back up to mid to upper 6.0 level after a recent spat of no 6.0 plus. And we did that. We went 6 point something over in Greece, 6.6, 6.8 here, and a deep 6, all in the last few days. So it's an increase, and it's going to go, I think, the next step up from here. So if we're already at mid-level 6, and we're going to go the next step up, that takes us up into the 7 range. And we're already flirting around with that anyways, with this earthquake, which originally came in as a uh, 6 anyways. So, or I'm sorry, it's a 7 anyway. So, here we are. We've got a big increase taking place. A lot of people don't know what's going on. And everybody else has got a lot going on around the world, and people aren't really paying attention to the earthquakes. So, we have to let everybody know, over from Papua New Guinea, over to western Indonesia, as far north as South Japan in this open area here, going over to here, but mainly along the interior edge. So, that's Philippines to South Japan. That's central western Indonesia, these big open areas that I'm pointing to. And then right next to the big deep earthquake, we have the fulcrum point between our sets of earthquakes. And you'll see how all the sets of rings overlap right here on Papua New Guinea, for instance. Now, a flowing river, we can use that analogy, and if this was a big deluge of water down a flowing river, we would expect it to spread like a fork in a river and go both directions from there. But there's a lifting motion that takes place here, so we actually have to also watch third spot back behind here at the Solomon Islands where both sets of rings overlap. Let me show that to you right here. So we have to watch three spots. All three spots should get hit. I would think the biggest earthquake would strike out in front or downstream in between our current sets of sixes. So I would think Papua New Guinea and Indonesia would stand at the greatest risk of this and back behind it this way. Or did I say three areas? I mean four. 
because we still have a warning going for the next day up here in Japan, a separate warning, not based upon this deep earthquake here. So this deep earthquake is the new addition to the list. Japan was warned separately up here in between Philippines and South Japan, right where all the rings are overlapping here because of volcanic activity and all the other fours and fives. Got to remember, Japan got a six up here off the coast of Japan, the first in 120 days, and that was this week as well. So going across, we don't have much other activity to talk about. Yesterday's fives, yesterday's fours, you can see here marked in a pinkish color, and we'll wait for this to refresh. Let's just wait for it one more time. There we go. And then going across South Europe, there is a new development. A 4.9 to 5.0 earthquake struck here, or I'm sorry, 4.2 earthquake struck here in South Greece again. And these numbers got really small on the screen. I don't know what's going on here. Oh, uh, I brought this up yesterday. This was open and silent yesterday. There was no activity here at all. And if you go watch my update from yesterday, I brought up the Azores. We talked about the Canary Islands down here and how energy would transfer out to the Azores. And I'd expect a new earthquake in the next few days out here. And it's already near 4.0 level out at the Azores. So check that off the list. What else happened since last night? Puerto Rico got hit. New 4.5 earthquake came rolling into Puerto Rico last night. And that's the increase we were looking for. It actually had gone back down. Now Puerto Rico is going back up. Uh, in the Pacific Northwest, not much to talk about here. West Texas got hit at the pumping operations in West Texas. And all the way up here in Alaska, just a little bit of activity. I have not checked, and we probably should go check. Let me just make sure you've got a screen capture on so you can see this with me. Let's just get over there and check the Volcanic Ash Advisory Center. What's going on there? Mount Tucono, regular suspect. Sabancaya, regular suspect. Nevada State Chilean, regular suspect. Same with Aso, Tucono, Sabancaya, all repeating. Mount Semeru is back on the list. 14,000 foot high blast, nothing to scoff at. Kluchevskoy, Sabancaya, Aso. Oh, wait, hold on. Ebico is back with the 10,000 foot high blast. Semeru, Ebico, Kluchevskoy. Uh, let's see, 20,000 foot high blast at Kluchevskoy again. So Kluchevsko is really going with big blasts, guys. 20, 30,000 foot, or 20 to 25,000 foot in the past week. Sanjay Rincon de la Vieja finally dissipated from yesterday. That was the new addition to the list in Costa Rica. So Semeru, I, I'm just going to have to say Semeru is the new addition to the list. So that's over here in Indonesia, Semeru. But nothing going back here with the big deep earthquake. You know what? We could see an increase also in the eruptive activity around this big deep earthquake as well. So that's my short little update here on the big deep 6.1 and just the other activity that struck since my update yesterday. But this is go time now with something like this. We watched the West Pacific. and well, we Really, we watched the whole Pacific. But we watched the West Pacific around where the big deep earthquake is. Then we watch for a spread. I mean, as if the big deep earthquake isn't enough. Or the shallow larger earthquake that comes afterwards. We watch for a spread to take place to our middle fulcrum points. The fulcrum points between our sets of earthquakes. Sometimes they're wide and open and easy to identify. Other times it's a jumbled mess and we have to go down in between our sets of earthquakes to find where they overlap. To find that middle point. So whether it's a giant open area like here and we look to the middle of it or whether it's a clustered area with a lot of earthquake activity, we look still to the middle points between our sets of earthquakes. And, or if we have a bunch of them together, we look to the middle point between all of them. The rough middle point, if you will. Okay, now people are talking to me, and this is something weird that's going around on YouTube. You know how it goes on YouTube with rumors and stuff like that. People talking about the potential of an extremely large earthquake due in Japan. Like really, really big they're talking about the 11th or something. Look, the 11th, you don't want to use that number if you're going to try and make an earthquake prediction. And I'm not going to discount it fully, but the 11th of all days, come on. If you don't know about Japan, March 11th, March 11th, 2011, 31111 was the big earthquake off the coast of Japan. So if there's talk online about a large earthquake, ask them for how you can repeat their forecasting method. If you ever hear anybody making a big earthquake forecast, ask them for 
the method that they're using so you can repeat it. And if they come back with, well, it's just a hunch or uh, blah, 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 well then, okay, whatever. Look, I was held to a high standard on earthquake forecast. You gotta be, a, be able to present your method to everyone to repeat. And if you can't, or you try to call it proprietary or something, then you're trying to cash in on it. Uh, anyway, I'm not gonna rant on that. It is 12, 14 p.m. Central Time. Just a short, quick update on the big, deep earthquake in the West Pacific. You see ro it rolling by on the right-hand side of the screen. So let your friends, family, loved ones, coworkers, associates online, acquaintances, let them know that we're due for very large earthquake activity the next step up from where we are now in the next 7 to 10 days, most likely in the West Pacific, and then a spread around the Pacific. So it's not like one spot's just going to get it. We're going to be seeing multiple large events spread out across the West Pacific, assuming this, I do have to say this, assuming this big, deep earthquake is legit. You know, what if it's an error? What if it's right up at the surface and they thought it was a deep quake and really it's a surface quake? The, the difference is huge. So that is something we also have to take into account that, you know, while they're reporting deep earthquakes, they can be wrong sometimes. Just like they can be wrong on a magnitude, they can be wrong on a depth. So I do have to also keep that lingering in the back of my head. It may be a misreport on a deep earthquake, in which case nothing will happen of any significance, and it'll just spread out and diffuse out if it's shallow. Because if this big, deep earthquake that's rolling by on the screen here right now, if that was shallow, first of all, it, it, we'd see it hugging the earth. It wouldn't be sticking high up off the globe. That would mean shallow earthquake just on the program here. But we know shallow earthquakes don't have an uplifting effect on the whole plate underneath it. It's happening up at the surface. So when it happens up at the surface, then it spreads out and elasticity takes place, which in other words, absorption. Absorption takes place of the power and you see a decrease in earthquakes as they spread out. So as the earthquake spread out from this six, if it was shallow, it, we'd see five spread out or fours spread like a crack in a windshield. You get your biggest break in the middle, and then it starts to spread out, and the cracks get smaller as they spread out and diffuse out into the substance of whatever is breaking. So, but when you lift up on the underside, if you're, let's use the broken windshield analogy again, you've got a crack in the windshield, and you get on the inside of your car, and you start pressing on the underside of your windshield from the inside. The crack's on the outside. Well, I'd be willing to venture a guess if you press hard enough and the crack is deep enough, it's going to make the crack spread. And it'll spread exponentially based upon how much you're pressing on the underside of your windshield. And the same thing can be applied to the underside of the plate over a vast distance. Okay, that's it's just trying to use an analogy we can all understand. Okay, let's save this as a video. And if you guys don't have an earthquake plan, you should probably take the time to develop one now. Also an emergency kit. You know, everybody's been doing this whole shelter-in-place thing for, God knows, the last several months. You should have an emergency kit in case you get cut off and you don't have supplies. Now, most people, their emergency kit is just going to get them through a few days. That's what it's really supposed to do. Your kit is just something that's going to be on your back or in a bag that you can carry. It's not the long-term supplies. Yeah, but you can't carry that stuff with you, the long-term stuff. So, emergency kit has the change of clothes, set of shoes, food and water for a couple days, and flashlight, batteries, form of communication, or a way to charge your phone. You know, a little battery pack or something. Those kind of things will come in tremendously helpful during any emergency where you're cut off without power or cut off without anything. And I'm just reminding you, you grab the bag on your way out, or if you're sheltering in place, of course, you go get the bag afterwards, after the earthquake strikes, and that means you got to have it somewhere where you can get to it. You don't want it up on some top closet shelf where the closet door can get jammed and you can't get to it or something. Have it somewhere easily accessible and so that the people in your household know where it is and can easily get it. Don't make it too heavy. You want to make sure that other people in your house who might not be as strong as you are can get it. So if you even have kids, maybe, you can even have a separate bag, an emergency kit for the kids and you can train them to use it. Because, you know, you might go to the gas station or something. You might even just step outside and go for a walk, and something happens. And the kids are still there at the house, even though, you know, you're not supposed to leave your kids at the house. But you know what I mean. So you got a teenager or you got an adolescent. They're old enough to take care of themselves, pretty much. And you're out of the house for a minute, and something happens. 
teach them where the emergency kit is. They can go grab it. And if you have young kids, it might even help them with some of the fears that young children have of the weather and the dark and, you know, all those things. That you can train them about being prepared. So let's say your your child is fearful of the dark and fearful of the boogeyman or whatever. You train them about the emergency kit and how you can get the emergency kit if you're in a time of distress and dispel that emergency. You can pass that emergency away by, you know, a flashlight. So if the child is afraid of the dark, you teach them, well, here's your emergency kit, and you go get your flashlight, and if you need me, I'll come teach you how to do it, child, but you shine it under the bed and you go see what's underneath it. You'll see there's nothing under there. Keep your emergency kit nearby. Keep the boogeyman away. <laughs> it's a good thing to teach kids now, right? I wish my parents would have done that. Anyway. All right. Yeah, be self-sufficient. Bust the boogeyman yourself with the flashlight and the bug out bag. Boogeyman hates the flashlight and the bug out bag. Boogeyman goes online and becomes a troll later on. Tries to tell you not to have an emergency kit. <laughs> uh, all right, all right, okay. All right, all right. Don't get me going. 12.20 p.m. Central Time. Perfect time for me to just sign off right here and wait for something else to happen of any significance. I'm going to upload this to YouTube so people on YouTube can see what just happened here with this big deep quake. We're going to watch for 7.0 activity next to the big deep earthquake over here in the West Pacific. And then a spread of, let's just say low end sixes, a spread of 5.9 to sixes after that. So big earthquake and then a spread going all the way around the Pacific, reaching over towards the United States. And by that time, I'll have a new update that will cover the United States. We'll cover everything, but this is just kind of developing in the past few hours, so... Perfect time to get it out there. All right, guys, peace out. Much love.